What's up, YouTube? I'm Valentin the Mad, and this is a gore review of X Men Origins Wolverine. X-Men Origins Wolverine is a slasher game by Raven, the people behind the goriest soldier of Fortune 1 and 2. Wolverine himself is a pretty badass comic book character, and the people in this studio know what they're doing when it comes to response mechanics, so there's quite a lot of potential here. And the question is, did Raven deliver here as well? Let's find out. I'll be reviewing every aspect of the game's score effects, and the score will be set based on four categories. Body damage, environment, animations and sounds, the fuel. Each limb has one point of amputation, the body can be cut in half, and the head can be dismembered. As you can see, the looks are very bad. It's generic meat and there is no sign of bones, organs, or a blood splatter around the point of amputation. So really, the dismemberment is unexciting in this game. Now how about non-dismembering damage? The first thing you'll see is the damage on Logan, which is pretty bloody amazing. Bullet wounds appearing at the point of impact, along with the exit wounds on the other side. Sometimes you'll be able to see through the holes, which was a jaw-dropping moment for me. And, when explosives are involved, you'll see large chunks of the body gun. Now let's dissect those mechanics. You have several layers. Clothes, skin, muscle right below the skin, all of which take proper damage, whether it's bullets, cuts or explosives. And below that you have the base, which is muscles and bones that don't show visible damage. There will also be some blood around the wounds. There are a few issues with that system. I think there could be more blood around the wounds, especially when it comes to explosives. There's nothing in between the top muscle layer and the bottom one, so on closer inspection, the top layer will seem paper thin, and there is no body damage for explosives below the waist. You see bleeding on bullet impacts, but there will be no wound. While seeing this is definitely underwhelming, nudity is not something this game aimed for, so I can understand this design decision. Despite the issues, the body damage is very impressive, and it's the best attempt I've seen on multi-layer damage, in a game that is not pixelated, or in voxel graphics. So, killing people with those mechanics has gotta be great, right? Except that you don't get that damage for the enemies. It won't take long until you notice that something looks off. So what do we have? One layer of a generic muscle texture. You'll be revealing parts of that layer wherever you hit, and unlike Logan, enemies won't bleed from the wounds. However, the absolute biggest issue here is the lack of proper equipment damage. What does it mean? It means you'll see the generic muscle texture over vests, pouches, gas masks, daggers... Well, you get the idea. When you fight a pistol-wearing thug who's simply wearing a shirt, a bloody wound tickle is decent feedback. However, when vests and equipment come into play, a simple tickle on top of the character will no longer work. So what would work? The best solution would be to see gadgets and equipment get sliced off when you attack the character, exposing a bloody wound below that. Big stuff such as vests could have several damaged variations before coming off. The easier option would be a slice in the core of the material on top with a large blood-soaked area on the clothes below that. Wouldn't be as satisfying as the first option, but certainly better than seeing meat on a backpack. It's kind of amusing. In most games I'm reviewing, the body damage for the player character is either non-existent or very poor. Wolverine is the opposite. Great body damage for the player, poor body damage for everyone else. A few other things I wanna mention. The impalement. What you have is some of that exposed meat, a bit of blood below the character, and a 2 seconds struggling animation. While it's by no means impressive, it's actually better than what we have in most games. With more blood below the character, and significantly longer struggling animations, we could potentially have truly exceptional impalement. And of course, you have the damaged sponges. 
characters who can take ridiculous amounts of damage and show little to no response for those hits. The body damage for them is either exposing the generic muscle layer or simply nothing at all. Repeatedly attacking the same character and seeing little to no response on their side is simply never a fun thing to do. It's a shame, the game already has the mechanics for a multi-layer damage model. Detailed mutilation and changes of behavior as the boss gets wounded could potentially make those fights to be the best part of the game. You have bloodstains on impact, some extra spilling on dismemberment, and blood pools for dead characters. The response stains are drops, oversized drops, and some splatter. I think the drops don't work very well for this specific game. If it would aim for realism, you could potentially have no initial response stains and the character would start bleeding after a few seconds, but that's clearly not the case here. More variations of splattered blood instead of drops would certainly work better. Now how about the blood pools? You quickly notice that they don't happen for everyone. The pattern actually is that you see blood pools only for characters who lost a limb. Characters with multiple slice wounds? They don't qualify. Maybe characters who got cut in half? Nah. How about characters who died from explosives? No pool for you. Does any of this make any sense? Absolutely not. And how's the mess in the long term? It is an Unreal Engine 3 game, so technically it's configurable in the INI files. However, I managed only to make the bodies stay permanently. Blood and wounds will still disappear after a while despite the tweaked setting. You can find the guide for that INI tweak in the video description. It won't provide a proper aftermath, but it will make the mess stay somewhat longer. You have response animations on impact, Death animations for dismemberment. Characters can be briefly knocked out and you can finish them off. The dismemberment animations are not bad. The character will be rolling on the floor, holding the area where he once used to have a limb. The biggest issue here, which is a very common one, is that those animations are very short. The one for the arms lasts for about 6 seconds and the one for the legs lasts 10 seconds. I think those animations are a good step in the right direction, but just like with Impalement, those animations should have been much longer to provide a truly brutal experience. How about any other death? The character will go straight to Ragdoll. Should be mentioned that you won't see changes of behavior for wounded characters. He can take 5 slices, shrug them off, keep fighting like nothing happened and then drop dead on slice number 6 doesn't look right at all. The response sounds on impact are not particularly brutal. You can hear the hit on the flesh, but it sounds pretty mild. On beheadings and amputations it sounds much better, however for some reason you won't hear blood spilling during the death animation where it's very much needed. As for the enemy reactions, they'll sometimes react on hit, scream when they die, and frequently comment during combat. The screams are not bad, however they are very short. It looks especially odd when you see a character in that death animation not making a single sound. No screaming, moaning, heavy breathing or anything at all. The feel is not good. The body damage for the enemies looks really bad. The spinning mechanics are decent, however the blood pools don't work properly and the stains don't look right. The animations and sounds don't really deliver either. The body damage for Logan is somewhat of a redeemer, but you need more than that to call the game a responsive experience. So the score for body damage is 13 out of 13. The score for environment is 13 out of 13. The score for animations and sounds is 14 out of 30. I give the feel a score of 4 out of 10. So this gives the gore system of X-Men Origins Wolverine a total score of 44 out of 100. 
Unfortunately, the gore system of this game can't be described as Soldier of Fortune with claws, which is a shame. I would love to play that. I do hope, however, that we will see more multi-layer damage systems in the future. It's an awesome mechanic and it needs to be taken further. Gora said would I recommend it? I really wouldn't. The game and especially the combat feel way too... generic and cartoonish. The enemy types, the damage sponges, the robot levels, slashing enemies while floating 10 feet in the air and many other things. And actually, you have a great visual example of what the game should have been like. The intro CGI trailer. No damage sponges. A lot more weight on every hit, both for Logan and for the enemies. His Wolverine, not the Terminator. Large open environments with a lot of room to maneuver. And maybe even some stealth mechanics with an option to avoid and escape from enemies. A Wolverine game like that could truly be an unforgettable experience. What we have instead is a generic slasher. Hope you enjoyed watching the review. Let me know how you feel in the comment section and if you liked the video, subscribe and share it around. You can find the link to all of my gore reviews in the video description. Until next time.